Hello everyone, this is Chris from Spoon Graphics, back with another video tutorial for Adobe Illustrator, plus a little Photoshop if you stick around till the end. I recently came across the website Junk Type, which is a compilation of nostalgic labels and packaging designs from various antique household products. Seeing all those old brand logos gave me the inspiration to make my own, so in this tutorial I'll take you through the process of creating a retro logo design for the fictional brand Hard Graft Elbow Grease. Many of those original logos contain the brand name within a geometric shape, so we'll use Illustrator's type and shape tools to construct a similar layout. After decades of wear and tear, those old product boxes are aged and damaged, so watch until the end to discover some additional techniques to add distressed effects to your design to give it a true retro look. I'm using the Milk Store collection of fonts by my friends at Heritage Type Co to create my retro logo design. This all-in-one kit not only includes 5 fonts with an authentic retro look, it also provides 18 ready-made logo templates, over 30 vector graphics and a series of textures to add the finishing touch to your work. It contains everything you need to create retro style logos, badges, labels, packaging or title designs with a nostalgic vibe. I've teamed up with Heritage Type Co to offer Spoon Graphics subscribers 20% off. Follow the link in the description and use the code SPOONAMILK20 during checkout to secure the best price around. To make your retro logo design, create a new document in Adobe Illustrator. Because the design makes use of black and white objects, I find it easier to use the empty space at the side of the outboard to construct the design. Otherwise, you can't see the white objects against the white background. Use the type tool to set out your brand name in your chosen font, which in my case is font number 2 in the Milk Store collection, a nice tall sans serif. Rough and textured versions of each font are also available, but I'll show you how to add those effects manually at the end. Select the rectangle tool and draw a shape surrounding the text. Grab the pen tool then click in the centre of the longer side to add an extra point. It helps to use smart guides from under the view menu to find and snap exactly to the centre of the path. Add a point on the top and bottom edge and hold the shift key and select them both with the direct selection tool. Go to object transform and scale and set a value of around 60% to create a custom shape. Click the move tool and deselect then reselect the shape so the full shape is selected, not just those two points. Then go to edit and copy to save it to the clipboard. Add the text to the selection by clicking it while holding the shift key, then go to object, envelope distort, make with top object. Go to edit and paste in back to replace the original shape. The text is now black on black so right click and choose isolate selected group to edit the original text element within the envelope distort object. Change the colour of the text to white, then make any spacing adjustments by placing the cursor and pressing the left keyboard key while holding ALT. Click the arrow icon in the top corner of the screen to exit out of the group back to the main artboard. Carefully select the black shape then go to Object Path Offset Path. Enter a value of around 10 pixels. Add another offset path, this time with a smaller value of around 7 pixels. Give this new shape a white fill to add a border effect. Add another offset path to this shape with a larger value of 15 pixels. Give this shape a black fill again. Go to edit and copy and edit pasting back, then scale down this shape while holding the alt and shift keys. Nudge the shape downwards, then add the original shape to the selection and go to object, blend and make. Head straight back to object, blend and blend options and configure the settings to specified steps and a high value of around 100. To permanently apply the blend effect, go to Object and Expand. This converts those 100 blend steps into individual shapes, so click the Unite button in the Pathfinder panel to merge them all into one much simpler outline. If you look carefully, there's still loads of unnecessary points that form the diagonal lines on this outline shape. Usually excess points like this can be cleaned up with the Object, Path and Simplify tool, but in this case they're not processed without distorting the main outline. Instead, zoom in and use the Direct Selection tool to draw a selection and delete the points. Remove any leftover points until there's just the end points from the other two edges left. Use the Pen tool to click between the points and extend and complete the path with just one simple line. Pan over to the other side and repeat the process to clean up the outline. Zoom back out and then select this outlining shape and add a final offset path. Make it 5 pixels in size and give it a white fill. Elsewhere on the artboard, lay out some additional text elements. 
I'm using font number 3 from the Milk Store collection with an increased tracking of 200. Give the text a white fill, then position one so the first letter aligns with the diagonal edge of the outlining shape. Zoom in, then go to Object, Transform and Shear. Choose vertical in the settings, then find a value that matches the angle of the diagonal line so the text flows parallel. Position this text element within the logo layout. Repeat the process for the other word, but this time it will need a shear value that manipulates it in the opposite direction. That's the main logo layout complete. Now let's give it a retro appearance by adding some textures in Adobe Photoshop to make it look like an old packaging design. Draw a selection across the entire design, then go to Edit and Copy. Over in Photoshop, go to File and New. Make the document 3000 by 2000 pixels at 300 ppi, which just happens to be the dimensions of the free textures we'll be using from Spoon Graphics. First, give the background a colourful fill as the backdrop for our product packaging. Use the shortcut Alt and Backspace to fill using the foreground colour. Paste in the logo from Illustrator with Command and V, or Ctrl and V on Windows. Before adding any filters, convert this layer to a smart object. Go to Filter, Noise and Median. Find a value that rounds off the sharp edges to create an ink bleed effect, but not too much that any blurry parts appear. Around 3 pixels should do. Next, go to Filter, Distort and Ripple. Set the size to large, then enter a value of around 15 or 16. You can double click any of these smart filters to change the settings in the layers panel if necessary. Download my free collection of dirty surface textures from Spoon Graphics by following the link in the description and open one in Photoshop. Go to Select an All followed by Edit and Copy, then close this texture image. Back in the main document, click the background layer, then go to Edit and Paste to place the texture above it in the layer stack. Change the blending mode to screen to make the black parts of the texture transparent, leaving just the white marks and scratches. The contrast of the texture can be altered using image adjustments and levels. Drag the mid-tone slider to make the marks more or less prominent. Go to Select an All and Edit and Copy, then add a layer mask to the logo layer. Alt and click the layer mask thumbnail in the layers panel to edit its contents, then paste in the texture we just copied to the clipboard. Click the main layer thumbnail to exit out of the mask and back to the main document. This texture mask is making most of the logo invisible, so click the mask and go to Image Adjustments and Invert to flip it around. Adjust the levels to fine tune the appearance to make the texture wear away parts of the logo to allow the red background to show through. Open a different dirty surface texture into Photoshop and copy and paste it into the main document. This time incorporate the shortcuts of Command and A, Command and C, Command and W and Command and V. Set the blending mode of this layer to multiply and invert it with the Command and I shortcut. Use Command and L to bring up the levels and adjust the slider to add an extra level of dirt to the image. Finally, add a solid colour adjustment layer using a pale yellow hue. Set the blending mode of this layer to multiply to give the white areas an old off-white discoloration which you often find on old packaging that start to age over the years. Photoshop is much more powerful than Illustrator when it comes to adding realistic texturing effects like this, but if you did want to keep your design as 100% vector graphics, let's take a look at some texturing effects you can apply directly in Illustrator. Back in Illustrator, first convert all the text and effects by going to Object and Expand. Go to Effect, Distort and Transform and Roughen to apply a similar ink bleed effect. Configure the values to smooth, absolute, and then set the size value to something small such as 1 pixel. You can adjust the roughen amount for certain objects if necessary, such as the smaller text elements. Click the roughen effect in the appearance panel to edit the settings to make the distortion less prominent at 0.5 pixels. Permanently apply this roughen effect by going to objects and expand appearance. With everything selected, click the divide button in the pathfinder panel. Right click and choose Ungroup, then select a single letter shape. Go to Select Same and Fill Colour and click the Unite button in the Pathfinder panel to make a single object out of all the white shapes. Select a black part of the design, then go to Select Same Fill Colour. Unite all these shapes into one black outline. If we want to keep things 100% vector, we can't use regular raster textures. Instead, open up a vector texture 
like this subtle grit textures pack that is available for Access All Areas members on Spoon Graphics. Choose one of the vector textures, like Serious Grain. Copy the texture and paste it into the main document. Scale it to fit over the logo, then make a copy. We'll need to use it twice to process the white objects and black objects individually. Despite all the white shapes being combined into one object, the Pathfinder tool still won't work properly unless a compound path is made first. Select just the white object and then go to Object, Compound Path and Make. Add the texture back to the selection again and use the minus front button in the Pathfinder panel to punch out the texture from the logo, leaving a detailed distressed appearance. Select the black objects and make a compound path, then go to edit and paste it in front to replace the texture. Add the black objects to the selection too, then click the minus front button in the Pathfinder panel to punch out the texture from these shapes as well. Draw a rectangle as a backdrop and give it a similar red fill colour. Place it underneath the logo using the right click Arrange Centre Back menu. Paste in another copy of the texture and adjust its size to cover the background rectangle to add some extra detail. This illustrator version doesn't quite have the realism of the Photoshop effects, but the vector logo file can be saved with the texturing already applied for use as a complete logo design. If you enjoyed this tutorial or learnt any new tips and tricks, a thumbs up on the video would be really appreciated. Stick around for more of my content by subscribing to the channel and be sure to join my mailing list at Spoon Graphics to download all my free design resources. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.